Hello everyone. Sorry. I'm Theodora Gasleonti and we're painting webs and art supplies. So welcome to this live. Um, we'll be painting some sisos since I feel like uh, summer is here now. So I think this is a very nice subset for people who are beginners. It might seem that it's difficult and it's a bit more intricate to paint sisos, but it's actually not. Uh, it's actually very easy to do. And we will do it in a very easy illustrative way in just a few steps. So today we'll be painting two sisals. I hope you enjoy it. So I'm just going to flip my camera around and I'm going to show you uh, what we will be doing. So apparently there are so many different types of sisals. We will be painting uh, two of them today. Let me just okay, hook my phone here. Cool. So these are some sisals that I painted uh, yesterday over uh, Amazon Live. And I have a spot down here with two more uh, that I'll be showing them to you. Okay. Just adjusting so you'll be able to see. So as you can see, it's very, very easy to do. Here, for instance, I just did some loose brush strokes and it turned out to have some volume. Okay, and here are some of the palettes we'll be using today. So here I have the Allegro palette, Crimson Art Supplies, and here we have the Serrano. This one has more summery shades. All right. Just looking on my reference. So we're gonna start with this one. Just in the camera a bit more so you will have a closer look. All right. And I'm just going to start I'm picking out my brush. So this is a number five round brush. It's a small round brush. Since the scale of the drawing is small, so we don't need a bigger brush. And also the first step when painting uh, for me is to, to mix the colors uh, first before I start painting. Uh, but actually some people want to prefer to mix the colors um, on a canvas or I don't know, you can do that on paper when you paint a watercolor, but you know, they do this as they go along to the drawing, but I prefer to, to be a little bit more organized. So this uh, seashell we will be painting now uh, has some dark tones. So I'm mixing a little bit of an onyx shade with a little bit of the amber here on my palette. All right. And we're going to start with some thin washes. We don't need too much water on a brush. And usually when we paint details, we avoid to have too much water because uh, this gives us to have a better control over this uh, element because water can be a little bit unpredictable so by having a little bit of water on a brush uh, it helps us to have better control so i'm leaving a little bit of the white of the paper there and that helps us you know to create a little bit of volume uh, it works as a highlight as well. All right. So here the rest of it um, has this spiral 
up the center. Okay, so now we have the basic shape of our shell. And what we can do now is work on our details. So we take it a step at a time, right? Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit more details and brush strokes uh, at this area that is now dry, but I do leave some of the underpainting to sew. There is no point in cover the previous layers with creators. And this way we create this nice uh, texture and depth because this type of shell has some, some texture here. And most of the time, cells do have texture. All right. I'm just thickening a little bit the lines here. And I'm just reapplying a little bit of color in some areas. So it won't be too flat. And that's very important because when we're painting in watercolors, we work in layers. All right. So as you can see now, we have created this nice uh, texture right here. Uh, maybe we're going to add a few more layers um, when it dries, but for now, let's also work on this uh, spiral center that it also has. And in this part, the seashell is a little bit pink. It isn't as dark, but it is uh, here. So we're going to add a little bit of color, just a little bit of the amber. Uh, and I've used some water to thin it down because we want this first layer to be kind of um, transparent. And I'm leaving some bits with the white of the paper. We don't have to cover up the whole surface. All right. And now I'm just going to grab some of the color that we used before. And now that it's still white, we do the wet and wet technique. And that is going to help us create some intricate patterns, some, some nice stripes. Since this color is going to bleed in with this amber. And it gives us a really nice result. So this is the wet on wet technique. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of green with my dark brown. All right because we want to add a little bit more darkness here. Just a hint, not too much. We don't want to go too dark. Just a hint. Nice. I think it's starting to look nice uh, to have some some texture, some volume. All right. 
So you see, those were just a few steps and we didn't use a lot of water. And already we have some results. Also, I have some older videos where I've painted several sea salts and you can also check it out, it's on YouTube. If you would like to see more, more summer things, more, more she sells. All right. So I'm just going to let this one uh, dry for now and then maybe we'll come back to it and add some highlights. And let's move to this one. Uh, this one might seem difficult, but it's actually not. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. And since it is white, uh, we won't be adding too much color and it will be created easily with just a few brush strokes, basically. Okay, so for this one, I grabbed my ring brush. So this is from the file I'm interested. It's currently out of stock, but it will be back soon. So you can have an eye out for it because it's a very, very helpful set to have. Okay, and now we're basically filling in some, some lines we're giving shape to this seashell. Usually we start, like I said, with some thin washes. But for this one, I'm starting it from the outline first. Here on the top, it has this edges that are kind of sharp. Some sharp edges. And here it has some some texture. As well. Okay, so let's see how this one works. Okay, so we have like the, the basic shape there. So let's start working on the details now. And of course, since it's a small scale, we'll be using this small brush. This one is a detail, zero, zero, round synthetic brush from the toner set. And I'll be doing some, some thin washes with it in some areas. And I'm going to leave some of the areas, like I said previously, um, white. And I'm also going to grab the number one round for this area. I just need to add a lot of water now to my brush. Because I want to make the color a bit more transparent. Like I said, it helps if you leave some of the white of the paper. And here are the sharp edges of the seashell. Now we're adding some spots here. But 
that'll help us create some some texture. Nice. So I will wait for it to dry a little bit. I'm just going to grab some white gouache that I got here to finish up this one. So here is my jelly gouache. This is what it looks like on the inside and we'll be using the white okay So I don't know about you, but the weather here is like really hot and I can barely stand it at the moment. So I hope I'll be collecting some seashells at the bits real soon. I don't know if you guys like to, to collect seashells. It's something that I like to do as a child, but I never found any big seashells um, in the sand. And that always made me feel so disappointed because I wanted to find a really, really big shell. Uh, so I ended up buying them. And I've also seen some really nice artworks that were made uh, with seashells. Okay, so now we've added some of the highlights. And here, just a little bit full texture. And basically you can keep on working on your drawings until you're basically pleased with them. And some artists once said that art is never really finished, is easily abandoned. And I kind of believe that, that we leave our paintings when we are like satisfied with the work, but there's always something that you could be working on. And also, if you guys um, decide to, to draw seashells, uh, I'd love to see them. You can post them here and I can have a look at them.
me, right? You know, just basically now we're adding some some small details, some some small uh, finishing touches. And like I said, if you want to see uh, more sea cells, we have a really nice uh, video that I did, I think, a couple of years ago uh, with many, many seashells. And also we have one with, with sea creatures, if that's also something that interests you. All right, and we're going to let them dry. So that was it for today. We have here several sea salts. And I hope you try this out. Thank you very much, guys. Goodbye.